All right. Former Baylor head coach, former Mount Vernon head coach, and uh, Art Bryles was hired by Hugh Jackson late last week. The story popped about a week before that that Grambling had targeted him, targeted him to be the offensive coordinator for Hugh Jackson at Grambling. He kind of went around. He's a little black. A little, you know, there's some like, what are you doing? There's some columns and all that. And then by the end of the week, it became official. The AD for Grambling tried to discuss why they were giving Art Bryles the opportunity. Some people can agree with that, and some people just can't live with it. And then uh, you started to see some of the national outlets with certain segments discussing it. Paul mentioned Stephen A. Smith, who uh, blasted him away, and, and also blasted uh, Grambling and Hugh Jackson. There was also a column over the weekend, and I think it was from Adelson. I can't remember her first name. I Andrea. Know, Andrea Adelson. And she, she kind of put together the timeline of things that she saw. Um, then... Today, Art Browse resigned. Doug Williams, to me, you could say anything you want about Stephen A. Smith or any columns that were written. Grambling football is Eddie Robinson. It is Doug Williams. And there's also others, great players who went on to play in the National Football League. But when I read Doug Williams' comments, that he had talked to Grambling about this, and what he said, that he could no longer condone the hire and or be a part of the university, basically with Eddie Robinson rolling over in his grave. I thought that eventually that would get him. It didn't get him right away. Then there was a story about how there still needed to be a vote among the trustees or whoever, and there's a lot of them. And I said, okay, that's going to get him because eventually it's going to be so much blowback, like there always has been. And then today, the new Pete Thamel had it first that Art Browse had resigned as offensive coordinator for Grambling University and also released a small statement about it. We'll have that here in just a second. This is the second time that Hugh Jackson has tried to hire Art Bryles. He tried to hire him as a volunteer coach when he was the head coach of the Cleveland Browns. I don't know if you've heard that story. It lasted less than a day. The owner of the Browns knew that Art Bryles was going to be a volunteer coach, and then all of a sudden he got blowback blow from his wife, who was then told, you're hiring this guy? And that ended just like that. And then Hugh Jackson with Grambling, it didn't take, I'd say, officially about three or four days, and now he's no longer a part of Grambling University. We'll read the statement here. Uh, in fact, the statement from Mark Browse here in just a second. In fact, here it is. Unfortunately, I feel that my continued presence will be a distraction to you and your team, which is the last thing that I want. I have the utmost respect for the university and your players. And, and he probably couldn't have summarized it any better. Uh, I... I've long been, and you can go back and, and, and sure, you know, give me receipts on this, but I, I've i been a, an advocate of Art Browse getting a second chance if he was, and which I thought he was, and I think that some of him partially is contrite about it, but at every turn when he's given been given the opportunity to say what he really is about being contrite or what that really means, he misses. And it's because he sticks to these talking points that just are not in reality. So... In the KTAL interview that he did last week, uh, he was he answered almost every question that you'd want to answer. He answered most of them the way you'd want to hear what you want to hear, except for the first one when he was asked, you know, why should you be back in coaching? And he said the NCAA didn't find anything wrong. There was nothing. We had no committed no NCAA violations. But saying that is the most emissive talking point in the entire world because yes, the NCAA found that yes, you did not break any NCAA rules but they went, made a point to say that you broke a lot of ethical rules and moral rules in the fact that you did not handle it the right way when attached to it and at every point when people ask us over the years should art browse have been fired i always say yes because at no point did he or ian mccall or even ken Starr until until pushed uh look at themselves and say, hey, this happens once a year. It's happened a couple other times where it's kind of gotten out in the news with Tevin Elliott, Sammy Kowachu, all this other, and nobody ever said, do we have an issue we need to address internally with a football team? Now, we all know the issue is bigger in the university, but for, for what Art Browse could handle, what Art Browse was responsible for was the football team. So when more than one of those comes in, if one comes in, you know, look, it's going to, I mean, 
Things bad things happen, but if it happens and it happens and it happens, you have to look at an organizational reason. Why is this happening? What are we doing that this kind of constantly pops up? Whether it's your fault or not, you need to look at it. Ba those guys did not do that internally with the Baylor football program. And that's why Art does not have a job now. And that's why he will not have a job because he will not say, look, I did not understand the level of what this is. I did not understand where this goes and how bad this is at universities. I didn't get it. I was wrong. I was wrong. What he did say is, of course, I don't advocate this. And nobody says that he, nobody's really saying he advocates it, but that's how he feels it. What he is saying is, I didn't do anything wrong. I didn't do anything wrong. I was railroaded. This was this. When he should have said, like, while the university, the rules were bad, the university rules didn't work. It wasn't that. I was part of that. I was a leader. I'm responsible. I accept my role in it for naivety or ignorance or whatever it is, but I know I would like to prove that I'm not that person. He has not done that. Yeah, the other issue was uh, the whole Hugh Jackson Foundation uh, aspect of this uh, because basically with them shining a light on their hire of Art Bryles prior to board approval, mind you, which was another misstep uh, that their athletic department took, uh, was making it public before it was actually official, uh, was this just let people go searching around a little bit? And they're all of a sudden like, also there's the this whole Hugh Jackson Foundation, huh? And they're talking about, you know, uh, the Hugh Jackson Foundation and what it stands for and talking about the comments that Hugh Jackson had made in regards to Bryles and he had said that, uh, you know, no matter your views on the topic, remember that people can become re-traumatized and re-victimized and uh, they want to continue to support Bryles and all victims of, of assault and violence and social and racial injustice and, and they talked about healing and all this other stuff, but then he started to get people like Dan Murphy who was looking through the Hugh Jackson Foundation and, hey, they collected 158 grand in 2019 spent 115,000 of that to their one employee <laughs> you know 15,000 of that 158 was on travel you know and then they start going through all this and like okay now the Hugh Jackson Foundation is all of a sudden under the microscope and doesn't look like it's really on the up and up and so yeah this ball just got rolling in a big way and they could not stop the momentum of the backlash and that's been the case every time his name has been brought up you know he's like a he's like a uh, a bit on uh, the Levitard show, you know, like anytime he gets brought up, like uh, what's this dude's name? Uh, Stugatz is it's like, it's a whole bit now. Mm. It's not even like, it's just like his name gets brought up and it's like a, it's a bit for, for listeners of that show. That's what it's become in some ways. And, and yeah, for anybody who sees his name mentioned, it's just, it's radioactive. I mean, it totally is. And I, I do think that uh, part of the reason why he's not able to get a second chance like a Bobby Petrino did or like countless other coaches who have had uh, scandals of some sort uh, surrounding their names is a, a lack of, of, you know, what Paul's talking about. I do think there's always been this sort of, um, as much as I've tried to go into interviews open-minded and, and I try to do that with anybody and try not to have that, you know, that just concrete opinion, like a concrete opinion was obviously, like, Hey, things went wrong. But like in terms of hearing him talk about it, it's like, all right, I'll be open-minded and hear what he has to say. And he's had a handful of those opportunities now. And every single one of them has gone wrong. Every single one of them has made it worse. So clearly there's something not connecting there because it just gets worse anytime he talks. And, and it should have from the very beginning been contrition and been acknowledgement of like, even if you didn't think what happened was totally your fault, you still are the head football coach, like Paul said. And so there's still some responsibility. And whether or not he might have made a comment, you know, at one point accepting some of it, it never felt that way. It always felt like deflection or not as bad as you think it is. Or I don't know. He just never really was able to have the right response. And I think that that hurt him. I think that that kind of buried him early on. And, you know, this now... I mean, we've seen the CFL, we've seen the NFL, we've seen college football, we've seen every single, we've seen high school football. He actually got to coach there with Mount Vernon, but that wasn't without its issues either. Um, yeah, I just, I, I think this is, this is it, man. Like, I don't think we're going to be hearing about him getting another assistant coaching job because Hugh Jackson's tried it twice now, as you mentioned, and both times it's resulted in the same outcome of him not coaching a single down of football, basically. So, uh, I think the handling PR wise, uh, I think there was some missteps there and some bad advice and however it occurred, I don't know how that didn't change drastically over the last three years, but there he was. And he just sounded like, kind of like the same guy still, you know what I mean? And, um, clearly that's, that's not something that people are willing to accept. Clearly, uh, the public is, is not on board with, uh, 
what he's had to say in regards to what happened. If you're going to hire him, then you need to know going in that there's going to be a major amount of backlash, not just on social media, but also throughout most any media. You have to know that going in. And maybe the question is, Art, you understand there's going to be blowback. Not that he's dumb. He understands that. Um, we want to hire you, but this is going to be a major distraction. And then if you're anybody, the last thing you want to do is become a distraction. That doesn't mean controversial people aren't hired. People who have history of being stupid, making mistakes, whatever ways, you, they're hireable. He is absolutely the poster child of not being hireable. Yeah. Mount Vernon's superintendent did it, and he was there for a couple of years. And you know what? He could have stayed there because he weathered the storm, and he kept winning, and they went to the semifinals his last year. Then he resigned because I think he thought that there was an opportunity again coming down the road, and we've heard that before. I'm going to go back to this. He's gotten some bad advice from a lot of people, including one of the most elite agents in the world in Jimmy Sexton. In the interview he did in the September after the firing – on ESPN College Game Day, which was an absolute disaster. he There are people who could get rehired that are absolutely just complete liars who can be actors or actresses in an interview that would be rehired because they could handle it and be a fraud. Well, Urban Meyer did it. Okay. I mean, uh, but he, because he can do that. It is, it, and I, I thought, you know what, I'll, I'll tell you, there's the part of all of us who have our own problems. And there's a part of me that said, you know what, that might, that might work. And then Doug Williams talked. And I love Doug Williams. And I love everything he's ever represented. And when he fired off what he said late last week, I thought somehow or another that was going to eventually come back to most likely end this hire as well. Because he's a powerful figure in Grambling University and also for HBCUs. Yeah, I just I don't know what Grambling was thinking. I mean, what a bad handling of the entire situation to announce him publicly before it's even official. That's a, a miscalculation. And to have somebody who is basically the face of your program now uh, in Doug Williams, to have him... Who told him ahead of time, who, don't do yeah, it. Yeah, who let him know, yeah. like, hey, I'm not on board with this. And you had to have known he was going to talk publicly about it because somebody was going to call him from some paper getting his comments on it. And for him to, yeah, to totally just poo-poo all over the entire thing... I mean, yeah, like it was it was disastrous from the get go, kind of like every other instance of where this is has attempted or been attempted uh, to bring him on board. But yeah, I, I just think that he set the wrong tone from the very beginning. I know some of that was probably agent advice or maybe his own personal feelings. I don't know, but he's just for whatever reason, just never been able to come across genuinely to, to the people out there. And he's never going to. I mean, there's just like I. Uh, I, I'm not lost on like why people have a dislike for him and what they believe happened and all that kind of jazz, but it is just crazy to me, and I think I said this the last time he was brought up, of just how much hatred and vitriol there is for him. Like, you would think that he's Vladimir Putin. Like, I mean, it's crazy because I don't feel like it's that nasty towards others, and so I don't know if that's because of his handling of it. I don't know if that's because of people still don't feel like he's uh remorseful or or what but it's just it's alarming to me um not in any kind of way it's just it's always alarming to me every time his name gets brought up to see that back that's that vitriol yeah. that, that comes flying back and and you know what grambling had to know that was coming and they announced too soon and even if they had announced with, with school approval and with doug williams approval and all that we might still be in this spot i don't know but um can't say we're totally shocked by this because we've been here, done this now a couple of times. Yeah. I, I, I mean, a lot of things happen where that the, these were not related to the scandal, but it was related to Art Briles' personality, and I can see it continually coming out. The fact that he will not, he, he doesn't move off the talking point of the NCAA found no violations. Yeah, that's not at issue, Art. That's not, and it wasn't at issue almost right after it was over. I mean, because people kind of knew based on Penn State what was going to happen with Baylor. If you were, if you were reading any of the tea leaves there, what it was like, I remember times uh, when, when Smokey, when you had pneumonia, I interviewed him. I did the coaches interview that week. I was sitting in the hallway and it was right after Kendall Wright. 2010. Had this, yeah. I had, had this fantastic game. And I said, I said, coach, one of the things that I, I'm impressed with Kendall Wright this season is, you know, the guy's, you know, five ten and a half, and he plays like he's six three. He's like, well, he's five eleven and three quarters. And I'm like, 
Well, I mean, coach, you get my point. Like he was always combative with like minute little details and he did not see the big picture. Defensive. Yeah, it was defensive. And, well, and it, it, if people would ask him a question. That's how his team played. Yeah, a yeah. chip on their shoulder. Yeah, people who would come to a, a visiting rider would come to a press conference and ask him a very innocuous question about someone from the city that they were in. Like, hey, I'm from I'm from Lubbock. You've got a great player from Lubbock that's con contributing. And he'd be like, what paper are you from? Are you from the uh, Lubbock paper? And he'd want to answer the question. Like, you know, if you get this combative and you're always naturally this combative, then you can fall into this repeated thing. And, and you know, I, I think that the duality of Art Bryles is really complicated because I, I, I will tell people if they meet him, I mean, he's not some nefarious, like, evil genius or anything like that, but he has got such a chip on his shoulder and he just is never going to understand this issue. He's I, never going to wrap his head around I it. I think you hit on it with the us against the world. Mm -hmm. That's what Baylor football was uh, with him at the helm. You know, they were the – it was like that that dude on the text line, like, who, you're Baylor. Who are you, 15, 20 years? Blah, blah, blah. It's like that, and they took pride in that, and, and it was us against the world. But the problem with doing that and isolating yourself, as, you know, people are finding out in all sorts of different stories here, is, well, when you look up, you're isolated, and you don't have – people to your left and to your right you're you're on your own and i know he's got his supporters that he'll have for forever um and there were a lot of people i saw that were uh former players who were like orion stewart when we had him on the show the other day like he's always going to have that support but that's still a very small circle in comparison to the the, the group that's reacting when you're announced as a, a head coaching hire at grambling state and i think he you know he learned that lesson once again of you know when you're when you're uh secluded a bit, bit and then you've got some insulation around you you know that that's that's some protection but uh, that that protection is is you know nothing compared to the the forces he's facing uh outside we're going to take a couple of calls here in just a second from lee buttercup doesn't art Brown still have a case pending paul that might be why he doesn't say some of the things you wish he'd say maybe that might be used against him from ryan i saw that art Brown's resigned immediately came to this show ryan ryan's an ou fan uh, um, and then I'll, I'll answer, answer this one. Imagine a Dave Aranda offense or defense with an Art Bryles offense. It would never work. <laughs> no. it, it just wouldn't. It, that would, No matter who the two names are, the coaches, that's just not going to be. That's like oil and water. It's got to be complimentary. Let's go to the I calls. I mean, if, if they could pull it all, that'd be freaking greatest team ever, dude. But, yeah, that would, it would that'd be a, It yeah. would be hard to work, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go to Steven in Virginia. Thanks for your call. Hey, guys. Um I'm going to be calm because I, I want to give my perspective on Coach Bryles. First, I hope he's doing well. I know this can't be a good day for him. As much bad stuff, I don't wish any hate upon him. Uh, the frustration I have is that I think Coach and Kendall, well, maybe Kendall more so because Coach can't get a job, but Kendall continues to get jobs, and Jeff Levy does too, and I don't really feel like it's fairly stated their role in things. And you know, I've heard this kind of Baylor us against the world thing. That's a vibe that stuck here. You know, it's, it, it really was easy for people to claim that Baylor was only good when they got dudes from the county jail to play defense. And that's like, not true. And so the fact for me is, is that I'm upset that, you know, I saw Grant Taft say on pony excess that sometimes the guilty get away and the innocent suffer and suffer. And it, it was really hurtful. So I just want to provide that perspective as a, like a fair kind of perspective. Steven, we always appreciate your emotions. You wear them on your sleeve, and that's why we love you, man. Thanks for yeah. the call. I don't I mean, quite we understand always the, agree with you, but we appreciate yeah. it. I don't quite understand the last part you said about like the innocent suffering or whatever, because I don't think there's – you know, the innocent suffered or the, the victims from years ago. And, and I'm sure anytime his name gets brought up, you know, there's a little bit of a, a trigger there, or perhaps other names get brought up. I don't know. So I don't quite follow you on that, but yeah, it's just, a, it's a bad deal all the way around. Uh, there's, there's no doubt about that. And, uh, they it always has been kind of an us against the world mentality, but they they really embraced that and used it as fuel. And, and unfortunately, um, you know, in this case of, uh, the us against the world thing uh, for him, uh, he's still got the us with him, but that's a the group that is dwarfed by the the them uh, yeah. out there. Yeah, and, and uh, as far as the court case thing goes, I don't know where those some of those stand. Uh, I as far have as no his, his idea. individual involvement, I know he was he was actually removed from some of them just because it yeah. wasn't like it wasn't going to get down the road. Uh, and this is there's one well, there's there's two things you can he one can of the pick. columns I read. And I can't remember which one it was. Mentioned that he is still a part of some sort of a 
a lawsuit and they're trying something. to throw it out. Yeah. But right now, currently, he is still but, a part of one. But but admitting in an interview and in, 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 in the right PR, if you're going to do talking points, here's a talking point. You can admit to something and not have it come back to you in court, which would just be, I understand the moral failing of, of my ignorance. That's it. But that doesn't mean you're complicit. I mean, because again, he jumped into the us against the world game of blame. Sh like he, the, the, the worst part about this to me was that you have victims in all this. And then the two entities that were completely responsible for any of it, when you come to whatever happened in the football program and then whatever happened in the university, just decided to go to this game of blame shifting until they could, they could navigate it, mm -hmm. which the best way to like you were the best thing about to approach PR with is if you, you know, bad things are going to happen. It's not like you're going to eliminate hurricanes. There are going to be hurricanes. Do you have a hurricane for a day or do you have a hurricane for 10 years? And what Art Browse and Baylor did was essentially create a 10 year hurricane for them. And because of the blame shifting, you can walk into the storm and ride it out, or you can do things that will just completely create more storms and more storms. Well, I think uh, this is also a massive misstep by Grambling, obviously. Mm, yeah. I mean, I don't know what they were thinking uh, with, you know, releasing it before it was official, knowing that there was going to be, you know, some level, whether it's Doug Williams or others, some level of pushback, and, and it wasn't going to be 100%. So that was just a great miscalculation on their part. And, and I think, too, when you got all the momentum that HBCUs have right now, seemingly, and you've got, oh, all right, we've got Hugh Jackson, and uh, you can make any number of hires. You chose the one that was going to be the most controversial and that was over in three days. You know, like that was just – I understand the, the logic behind it because he obviously tried it once before. But with so many opportunities to, you know, make – make a statement or make an impact i just i feel like he made the wrong statement and the totally wrong impact for grambling football and uh hopefully for them it's just a little hiccup in the road but yeah bad pr lesson right Stephen there Stephen vaughn the innocent i'm speaking of are the survivors That's okay what he was yeah, yeah okay and also i misspoke on something and i gotta when hugh jackson the statement was released I did not think that the statement mentioned anything really about Art Bryles. It actually did at the front and end. And thanks to English Bear mm -hmm. on the premium forums, the recent hiring of Art Bryles as a member of the Grambling State Football has caused confusion and concerns we want to address. And then as, as we move forward together with Coach Bryles, we ask that people keep in mind, no matter your views on this topic, remember that people can and often do become re-traumatized yeah. and re-victimized by statements which may or may not be accurate. And so, I think that's what Stephen was just talking about. Yeah, so, I, I mean, I know one thing. The the thing that buried Art more than anything was uh, was the, the Baylor itself uh, at one point coming out with the whole 52 yeah. alleged incident. That, that's the number that will never go away. And uh, that's what will haunt him. And I guarantee, and I don't know, I'm not looking, but I guarantee – if you typed in Bryles and 52 right now, oh, yeah. it's probably all over Twitter uh, because people have, have recited that accusation or allegation over and over ad nauseum for like five years now or ever since it, it was put out there. But, yeah, I mean, there's – he's just – he's he's got some uh, some some problems uh, that, that just never really um, – went away or were dealt with properly because I, I do think like if had he handled it differently had gotten better advice initially i don't think he was going to be coaching right away but i do think that there was a rehab available like for him as a coach um but i think he was just handled badly to begin with and it was handled badly when they got a little you know uh an extra chance and it was handled badly the third you know and it was was handled well, badly all the way around, and that's why we are where we are. Well, and look, I'll go back to we got a, we got a break. Yeah, we got, we have two calls as well, but I will go back to provide some context on this. After covering the Sam Ukawachi trial, I was one of the first people to come out. I was I was the only one there from the local media all the time, except for Tommy Witherspoon. But uh, when I came back and I asked him a question about did Chris Peterson tell you anything about Sam Ukawachi and some of the incidents he had, the legal incidents in at Boise State and he said no 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 this they just said he was homesick and it was really hard I think for a lot of people to believe like these two Cody wouldn't tell him about the incident where Sam punched out the windows in his house and some of the issues that he had like or what my argument was Baylor when you have a billion dollar business or a multi-million dollar business that's when you should have your own investigators maybe go to Boise and make sure but can you do that for 25 guys coming in every year maybe Maybe it's worth doing that because I wonder if there would have been a private investigator just to double check. 
Chris Peterson kind of walked away from this. Like, oh, there was he no did. big deal. He, he, that's who he needed, Chris Peterson's agent. Yeah. Because mm. he handled it perfectly to be able to just drop a little bomb that went off in Waco and then just roll back and, he, and go into, you know. In his statement, he said, Chris Peterson, this is a direct quote, I am being intentionally vague here. That was his direct quote. Protecting yeah. himself yeah. when he said it. All right, uh, let's go to the calls. There was much more we'll get to all the way up until Paul's top five here in about 20 minutes. Yeah. Joe and Waco, thanks for your call. Hey, what's going on, fellas? How you doing, Long Joe? Time, uh, no talk. Hey, man. I'm uh, doing well, gentlemen. Uh, got to see you, got to see you the other day, Paul, coming into the barbershop, which is awesome. Uh, Smokies, you two got to get down there, too. Uh, let us get you get your haircuts going uh, and get that beard trimmed up for you, David. <laughs> uh, anyway, man, this with Art Browse, man, you know you know how how much of a fan and how m- much love I have for Baylor, but I really feel like he's the only one that's still suffering through all of this. And I get it; he's not he's not an innocent man. He's he's got his stuff he's got to own up to, and like you guys have said, he, it wasn't handled the right way on multiple occasions that he, he should have uh, when it was given to him to handle it differently. But I just I feel like Baylor has, has pretty much kind of dusted the hand, their hands and threw their hands up and said, hey, we didn't do it. We're good now. But yet, no, Brown still can't get no, a job. Joe, Joe, I don't I, think – I don't get that. I, I, it doesn't I, make sense. But Joe, I understand your thoughts about Coach Browse. You can have that opinion. Baylor did not just raise their hands in the air like this – and say we're done with it. Uh, they have not done that. Uh, they have made, um, I think what they've done, They st- every day they still suffer from this. This is one of those things that I always ask this question, when things were going on, and if you could have just been a little bit more open about a lot of things or protected the student-athletes, whoever they were, students or student-athletes, did anyone involved in this, if they had any knowledge of anything, and I'm talking about police department, administration, coaching staff, athletics, whatever, students. And I know that sometimes you can't, if you're a victim, you feel like you can't come forward. My point is this, did anyone ever think about truly what would be the scar that would last with this university, no matter how amazing they are right now in many things academically and athletically? I bet the answer is no. Yeah, it's 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 been there for, for, for a long time. I mean, I understand where Joe's coming from, actually, because it does seem like they've kind of moved on from it. But I think that that comes with the fact that there was an NCAA investigation that lasted for years and hung over their heads, and that finally came to a conclusion. And there was all sorts of turmoil going on with as far as like coaching changes and things like that that just added to the stress levels. But there's a Texas Rangers investigation. There was the the uh, the academic investigation. I mean, there's all these investigations, so it wasn't like that they were just sitting there with nothing on their on their plate. They had all that on their plate. Play. the thing is is just time's gone by they've dealt with it and they've handled it and they've moved on from it and I don't think Art Browse has really ever dealt with it handled it properly and been able to move on does that make sense yeah no in certain ways I mean it, I think he's probably it, it, ready to move on I'm just saying that like I don't think I don't know I, those who are going to defend him and there are a lot who will defend him are saying that in fact one of the comments on the chat room and i know it sounds flippant but he, he's never had as much as a speeding ticket he's never been arrested he's never had any crime he's never been anything it, it's not it's not about that and i get that there are some that will defend him to death and there will some that thinks he's the evil man forever it's just like politics um i just wish that somehow or another soon after this all went down or even before it did when pepper hamilton came out in May of 2016, that Coach Bryles could have been more forthcoming and understanding uh, the emotions involved here. I know some think he's absolutely innocent, and there are some that think he should be in prison. I don't think he should be in prison. Uh, I do think that there are just ways that he could have handled this a little bit differently, it was sometimes with what he said, and... Even now, it, it's... Well, that's what I was kind of meaning, yeah. is that in... But Baylor has moved on because they paid the price. Now, they are still paying many of the victims. They're still in lawsuits. But they've, they've taken their heat. They've had, like you said, all the investigations. There's still more to come. But I think Baylor's going to have a scar from this, no matter who the new president or the new board of trustees or the new football or athletic directors or anyone else in between. Go ahead. No, I just I just think that uh, one side handled it better than the other. There you and go. One side's okay. in a better spot at the end because of what they did. They just said, "Yep, we were wrong. 
We did this. We're not even going to fight you on it. We'll fight court battles here and there. But for the most part, throw an article at us. Okay, we'll try and correct a couple things. Jason Cook will send out an email. But for the most part, just take it. Just take it, take it, take it. Make the changes that you can. Be transparent about your changes. Be public about your changes. They just they went through the process of redoing everything, basically, and took their lumps along the way, had some investigations along the way, and handled it all. And now they're, they're on the other side of it, basically. Basically. Uh, whereas with art, I, I don't know that that ever really happened. I feel like it always just kind of stayed in the same spot of you have a moment to show and maybe change some public opinion and people walk away from the TV and they feel even more hatred towards you. And then you do it again and they're like, okay, you're still the same dude. And like, he never had that moment where it was like, okay, well maybe just maybe he wasn't as, or he's not what we in and, and, and instead he just every time that moment came up they fumbled the bag i mean that quite frankly they did whereas with baylor they just held on to it as tight as they could ran through as many tackles as they could and were able to find some daylight eventually but uh i think he got hit at the line of scrimmage got back up got hit at the line of scrimmage again then just got sacked a second ago yeah yeah all right uh, let's go to eric and lubbock and then we got to take a break what's up eric? Hey guys. how you doing doing well doing okay hey, uh, Hey, uh, I just want to say, uh, hey, I just want to say, um, I know a lot of people will probably call and discuss the Art Burrell situation itself, but I want to say my heart goes out to Art and to any of the victims, but I'd like to bring it back to football a little bit. Okay. I'm a 1995 Baylor graduate, and so I lived through the lean years that most high school kids don't know Baylor had. For about 20 years, we were everybody's homecoming. Uh, we were just getting killed by everybody, and then along came Art. And in almost no time, he turned us into a powerhouse. We won two Big 12 titles. We were scoring, I think, an average of every 93 seconds. I mean, I was the happiest guy in Lubbock, Texas. And then, as we know, that all fell apart. And honestly, I'd never thought we'd get back there. I was just distraught. But lo and behold, we've made two Sugar Bowls in the last three years. We just won one. Uh, we're now doing it with defense. We have two of the last three defensive players of the year. And, you know, I... So I thought that we were maybe a flash in the pan, but it's turned out that we're now a program. And we survived the Brown saga, and uh, I'm really proud of what the university has done. Thank you very much, Eric. I appreciate your call. I do know this, that those who were upset yeah. about how things and the transition, one of the things I do know is there were many who said Baylor would never win again in football. And they've won now under two different coaches since then. Yeah, I mean, that's that's not a dunk on anybody or anything like that, but it's just it, it, the result of it was, yeah, there was a lot of talk, a lot of talk uh, back in 2017, 2018-ish about they're never, ever going to have a coach that can do what he did. They're never, ever going to win Big 12 titles. They're never, ever going to you know win 10 games on a regular basis. And I heard a lot of never, evers. We all did. Uh, and you know what? At the time, we probably believed some of it, too, <laughs> quite frankly. If you knew how bad the mood was around here, like there was reason to, to buy into even more negative negativity quite frankly and believe like well maybe maybe that's true and then when Matt Rule's first year happened you're like oh my gosh it is true like they're never gonna they're, they're just back to be an old Baylor but uh yeah they the process and sticking the course and just making the right hires that was that was ultimately the, the biggest deal was making the the right hires and, and here they are with Dave Aranda and I don't think anybody would trade him for for just about any other coach no. out there right now in no. America uh he, he's he's the goods he's the real deal and and Matt Rule deserves credit too for for making people believe again that it wasn't just going to be the dark years and it was going to you know still be uh, potentially great and uh, we saw great this past season so yeah uh, like you said definitely thoughts out to all the people who are kind of having that rehash now that are hearing this uh, conversation or seeing the conversation because there are you know victims out there and, and people involved that I'm sure this is kind of like a you know brings anxiety or whatever uh, but yeah it's uh, just, just all unfortunate all the way around but to your point about the program yeah it's it's, it's amazing how that's uh how that's flipped and it's it's uh, it's also unfortunate because he's always going to be referred to as former baylor head coach art Priles, even though he was at mount vernon high school we understand that because that's where everything's tied into of why he's no longer the head coach at baylor um why did he leave here, mount vernon well, I, 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 he was there too. He promised the superintendent, Jason McCullough, that he would be there for two years because when Jason McCullough put his neck on the line right. to bring mm -hmm. him to Mount Vernon when he was in Italy, uh, Italy, the, the, the country, um, I think that there was probably a concern about, I'm going to bring you back 
But and Bryles committed to be in there for two years, and some thought he would be gone after one year. He would go find another college job or whatever. He committed the two years. He went his two years. He built them up into a hell of a football program, left it in great shape, and they were good last year. And so that was it. And I, you may think I think always down deep inside that Coach Bryles and those around him always felt like there would be another opportunity to coach a college I, I, that's what i was asking because i felt like you know he did have something going there i'm not saying anything was promised no and they had battled through you know the initial pr it's, it's actually kind of funny that the not funny but humorous that the texas high school handled this <laughs> like more of a put up more of a fight than you know the cleveland browns the cfl and you know that's that's kind of weird i said but, that one time and i think you guys misunderstood what i said by that i, I it's amazing to me that a superintendent like right you, you said, I, I took it as you were complimenting him and and i is the one who was able to weather the storm and right. a professional franchise in america and also in the Can canadian football league could not yeah we're well, just coming from from two different uh wavelengths but uh yeah that's um it's, it's crazy that we're here at this point once again and uh you know uh we'll see if there's ever another next step i don't know though this seems like uh, we're pretty much out of opportunities or, or attempts at this point uh certainly you know and, what over three now yeah. and this story today the baylor women's basketball team is playing for a conference championship a co-championship at least tonight in ames and the men are playing in austin against texas i want